It's a long distance, but he's got a goodly gap here. This is this is clever stuff, Brian. 300 metres, 200 metres is coming very, very quickly. Wasato's getting involved here as well. And here comes Tali Baganja. He's, he's timed this absolutely brilliantly. He emerges out of nowhere. 150, don't look back, Steve. Keep going for it. You might just make this one home. Tali Baganja might even be allowing him to go for this. This is absolutely amazing. 50 metres now. Could he get it on the throw? Is Tali Baganja going to break his heart at the line? Oh, he does it. He does it. That is absolutely amazing. Here is Tali Bocaccia. Now, we said he's a very instinctive rider. He's somebody who just likes to test himself, Brian. At the front, UE Team Emirates doing a job at the moment, setting a tempo, and this is for Tali Bocaccia. It's either Bogaccia or indeed Mark Solo himself. Let's have a look further down. No, that's how made on second place. It it's Bogaccia. Yeah, Bogaccia's exactly. on his own. He's got unbelievable power from uh, Tali Bogaccia. He wants to own this race emphatically, quite clearly. And he has absolutely strode away from absolutely everybody. This is his game, and everyone else is here by invitation only, it seems. Tali Bocaccia is in charge, he's in the lead and by an enormous margin. And don't be surprised if he only goes and wins it again tomorrow. Fabulous effort by this man. And there is... Dali Bacaccio just on the back wheel of Mikkel Lander. Good wheel to follow. Uh, doesn't look quite as relaxed as he did yesterday. A little bit breathy by his own account. Um, with some great help from Sudal Quickstep, all I feel that this fear that this is doing, Brian, is uh, aiding Dali Bacaccio. He's getting a free ride at the moment. Good work by these guys. Here is the aforementioned Lasseur. Lander, thank you very much. I'm away. And Tully says, sir, OK, well, watch this. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He's in a brutal frame of mind, is uh, Tully Bocaccia. That's uh, two bike lengths. That's three bike lengths. That's four bike lengths. You get the idea. This is otherworldly, it seems. Tully Bocaccia, when he's in this kind of mood, well, just picking it. And why wouldn't you? Uh, 7.2 kilometers to go. It's 7 and 8% at the moment. And Lander doing a great job of just pacing himself into that gap. Telepocaccia hasn't uh, issued the killer blow just yet, but Lander's the only man who can stand with him. And if there was a chance that, indeed, uh, Vlasov could go with, he would have done. Telepocaccia is absolutely planted and owning this mountain as he did yesterday, Brian. Five kilometres to go. He looks very calm and collected, Brian. That's lethal. He does. Um, no real surprise, to be honest with you. Um, it was just a case of, you know, where he was going to go, and it was uh, Lander that instigated it. I don't. I think he would have. He would have waited a little bit longer. He didn't have to go. Um, he could have waited a little bit. It does get harder, as you say, the further you get up this climb. But every pedal stroke is just eking out another second here and there. And this is Lander, absolutely on form. This is fantastic news, not only for him, uh, but also to the likes of Evenepoel, who's going to be looking after uh, deeper into this season. He's bouncing beautifully. Take the pressure off Mikkel Lander, and he does this kind of thing. It's wonderful, Brian. Overall, he's sat in that position at the beginning of the day and he's going to be more comfortable in that spot, I think, by the end of it. This is a strong performance. This is where the real punishment begins and Dele is sitting in wheel two here, just on uh, the back wheel of uh, 
Um, his teammate Mark Soler is absolutely grinding it in. And there is Pogaccio, and he starts to look just so relaxed as it uh, you'd think eases just a little bit. We're not quite there just yet. 15 and 10% it comes down to. Uh, six over the crest till it flattens out, and then we will have that long downhill. But just look at the damage that's been done. Looking at the support that, um, you know, Pogaccio's got, he's got three of his teammates here, and, and this is what I was saying earlier on. Just oh. about, and I said, "Hang on, who can <laughs> hang on?" Because he went, he went again, and he's he's just dropped a bomb. And again, uh, Landa there, Tiberi, he's on a good day. Yeah. I think I think that was good from Movistar. What they they wanted to do is put um, the other GC contenders in a bit of trouble. But now, you know, there's nothing they can do about Pogacar. I think everybody says he's on a different level. Nothing you can do. And they're doing so again right now. And Tony Bacaccio has just stretched his lead, and this is a goodbye to everybody. Good night, Irene. He is on his way to another stage win by the looks of things. What on earth will be the gap overall by the end of the day? Don't be surprised if it's nudging up towards four minutes the way he's going, because it could be that others moderate their pace in order to have a bit of a kick at the end. You don't want to be isolated out there if you're anyone other than Tony Bacaccio. But who do you ride with? Who do you choose to shake hands with and count your fingers afterwards well this man one finger on the trigger he's pulled it and away he goes 29 kilometers from home 2.4 to the top of this test and he's equal to any test out there he's passing them all with flying colors Brian Meanwhile, watch out for these chevrons and indeed rock. Goodness me, he's absolutely pushing this, Brian. He's taking no prisoners. No, but he's he's confident. He's comfortable. Um, you know, when you're here and in the moment, you don't think too much of it. It's when you watch someone else do it, your toes curl up a little bit. Bogaccio over Egan Bernal, who's chomping at the bit here. You know, there are, there are some great riders in this race, and Tony Bogaccio has humbled them, Brian. He's kicking on again just readjusting the Vlasov group at two minutes this is going to be well he had nearly two and a half minutes two minutes and 27 over Mikkel Landa at the beginning of the day we suggested that it might well be there's a four minute margin overall by the end of it and the best climber here is Talibacaccia by far and the clerk can't decide what it wants to do at the moment and it's starting to head out towards that uh, blushes moment isn't it 10 k's from home another climb still to come Tanya Pocaccia in his pomp, Brian. This man, well, it seems he's almost like an impresario. He gathers all of the great showmen around him and then leads them it's his game and he plays it absolutely beautiful Tony Bogaccio crosses the line and the clock starts to toll against everybody else he's oh, coming Jeff. up he's leaving him behind well there's a moment's hesitation there and Thomas de has gone for it in fact, his tongue's hanging out like a, a spaniel out the window on a motorway. He is going for it. Harper looks like he may well be spent. He's coming up and over the top. 
right. Uh, and again, it's only going to be Pogaccio who's got the legs, I think, to follow him. This is gutsy stuff, Brian. Wonderful. This sort of terrain as well, it's bread and butter to this man. But it is a big chase down that's coming right now, and none other than Tali Bocaccia himself. Had to be, Brian. Yeah, he's got Bernal, but he's also got Enric Mas there as well, and he's not explosive oh. at the moment, Pogacar. He's not closing this down. In fact, Stevie Williams looked a little bit more explosive than uh, Pogacar here, but Stevie Williams, if he gets over the top here, and he's joined by Pogacar, Bernal and uh, Mas. He opens up, Guillaume Martin's also in the frame here. Tony Bogaccio himself wants a part of this. Everybody's in the party and Bogaccio's going to get there. Heartbreak Hotel, he's done it yet again. Adam, you're watching, you're trying to pick out what's happening. There's loads happening. What is happening here is Tadej Pogacar is coming good on his promise. He's set Tim Wellens to work. He's on the wheel and not many can follow now. Sepp Kuskan, Ben Healy just in that second group getting caught up. This is going to be a big move, I think. This is, if Tadej Pogacar goes this early on and where we think he's going to go, that's a long road ahead of him. It's been hard for quite a long time. 81 kilometers to go. Make a note of that number because Tadej Pogacar, who went on a 50 kilometer solo raid two years ago, has taken off and nobody can match his power. It's a long way to the finish here in these epic, as you described, Dan Lloyd, biblical conditions. It, it's a long way to go. It doesn't matter who you are, even if you are Pogacar. 81 kilometers on your own is an awful long way to go solo. So I'm surprised he's gone not to try to take at least somebody with him that's prepared to work, prepared to try and take it all the way to the finish line. He told us he'd attack here, and that's exactly what he's done. Tadej Pogacar turning his first pedal strokes in anger in 2024 in a year where he's going to take on both Giro d'Italia and Tour de France and the Sac del Toro, his teammate, is still following in the group behind and looking very good. Now Christophe Laporte in here, Matej Mohoric, Maxi Vochils is up towards the front as well. He's the rider in the, the red jersey that's now covered in mud. He told the interviewers this morning that he would attack here at this five-star sector, longest of the race, Monte Sante Maria. Look into the distance, it's spectacular. But Pogaccia, the Slovenian champion, has no time to check things out. He'll have taken in the scenery on his recon ride. He's come with white frosted hair tips to what he called the white road race. It's more like the brown roads today because it has been lashing it down with rain in the last 15 minutes. It has stopped, but it's changed the surface underneath. The race has been changed by Pogaccia, though, and nobody else. Tadej Pogaccia, in the space of three to four kilometers since his attack, has taken a minute now on the chasing group. There is Pogaccia. He said he would attack on the hardest sector today. He's done that. Monte Sante Maria is out of the way. We now have the longest part of the race without any dirt sectors to go. Today, Pogaccia has Two minutes on the chasing group. One minute 30 on Maxi Hills. A caveat and a pretty big one. There are still 70.5 kilometers to go. And this is Tadej Pogacar's first race of the season.
in the race because this is where, in the history of Strade Bianche, for the first time in years, things change. Yep. We're under the circuit now. Normally, you get to Colle Pinzuto and you're going, hang on a minute, we're getting yeah. towards the end of the race now. Not this year. There's still 49 kilometers to go for the man who has almost three, yes, three minutes of a lead on everybody else. And this is Fugace, he's enjoying himself. He can afford to do this. He's got three and a half minutes as he's on the Tolfe. Any general rider would not be able to hold his wheel. And he's been on the tack for 40 Ks. He's done 150 Ks before this as well. It's just madness. Attacking was going on behind the gaps growing and that tactical play that you talked about was playing out. Tadej Pogacar was riding sector 13, he's off it now, he has just two sectors to go and 22.2 kilometers remain. with Pogacar coming on to the penultimate sector now, at the end of the brand new circuit in this race. He's back to Colle Pinzuto. I think we know how it's going to go, and it's going to be something that is going to sit there in the record books, in the history books, in the storied of sports, in a relatively new race that already looks special and like a real classic. It's going to have a heroic performance to go with its nickname, the Heroic. Is he's approaching the final sector. Pogacar still looking good, still moving well, still extending his lead. It ticks on to five minutes, five long minutes over the main chasing group. As today Pogacar takes on the Tolfe for the second and final time of this adjusted Strade Bianche route. They've come to see their hero. They're here for the great entertainer, and entertain them he has done. For almost half of this ride, it's been a solo ride. Pogacar's there, and every little bit of noise here is for him. It's over here that the road becomes smoother. The gravel is gone. 71 kilometers of it tamed by this man. moment recorded for the memory because Tadej Pogacar might never do anything like this again that was unique this is Pogacar and there is nobody at all like him